Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. As you see, the set for WWHEN has changed. No longer filming at my house, but rather Pittsfield Community Television has allowed me to use their studio for filming. And I thank them for that. This week, as COVID-19 numbers are down, I'll be giving my last update on the state of Massachusetts reopening plans, plus talking about several new art exhibits and shows. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which will be answered at the end of the Clark Art Museum discussion. This week's question is, who are the first three writers who were honored with the Clark Prize for Excellence in Writing? Now for this week's local entertainment headlines. As a reminder, Massachusetts is currently having very few restrictions for those who have had the vaccine, but those who have not are still required to wear masks. Additionally, arts and entertainment facilities are having COVID-19 policies under their own jurisdictions. For instance, Barrington States Company in Pittsfield is requiring masks for all audience members, workers, and volunteers at all times at the Boyd Quinson Main Stage at 30 Union Street. No exceptions. However, they have a unique policy for the Outdoor Production Center at 34 Laurel Street. Their policy is now masks in motion. What this means is that everyone must wear masks while they are walking and milling about. Once they are firmly seated, however, masks can be removed. This policy went into effect for the production center only on June 28th. In some more state news, the Baker administration announced plans to immediately put to use approximately $2.815 billion of the Commonwealth's direct federal aid to support key priorities, including housing and home ownership, economic development and local downtowns, job training and workforce development, health care, and infrastructure. The administration's plan aims to jumpstart the Commonwealth's economic recovery by investing in urgent priorities, with a particular focus on supporting populations hardest hit by COVID-19, such as lower wage workers and communities of color. In a statement from Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, quote, it is crucially important that this $2.8 billion be put to use immediately to address issues caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and protect the competitive advantages which have allowed Massachusetts to grow and thrive. Supporting priorities such as housing, economic development, job training, and infrastructure will help power the Commonwealth into the post-COVID world and ensure that Massachusetts remains a great place to live, work, and raise family, end quote. In total, the plan devotes $1 billion to funding home ownership and housing priorities, a significant investment to help increase housing productions and reduce barriers to owning a home as part of the ongoing COVID-19 recovery effort. These new housing resources build upon over $1.6 billion in separate federal funding that has already been allocated to entities throughout the Commonwealth for housing purposes since the start of the pandemic. This, by the way, will mark the last state update that I will be doing on WWHEN. From now on, every two weeks, I will be mentioning the plays, concerts, and shows coming up in the future.
The Pittsfield Airport is bringing back a popular cruise night show. Each first Wednesday of the month from June until October, the airport will be open for the public to mingle and enjoy food, music, raffles, and a chance to see classic cars. Last year, it was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but this year, it will be going on stronger than ever. The cruise night will be taking place from 5 to 8 p.m. Masks are required for those who have not been vaccinated and are optional for those that have. Entry is free for all patrons. And the pitch, the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge will be highlighting fantasy artwork in a refreshing break from the typical paintings from the titular artist. Enchanted, a history of fantasy illustration, is a nationwide tour of the ever-popular fantasy genre in art. This is based off a book edited by Jesse Kozlowski. The fictional worlds of magic and adventure come to life in this exhibit. The term fantasy artwork takes on many different meanings and topics. Myths, legends, fables, romance, and epic battles will be highlighted, but so will themes of good versus evil, heroes versus villains, and how the fantasy genre grew from myths to a multi-billion dollar industry. This was going to be highlighted in 2020 due to the pandemic. It was delayed a year. This is an event that takes place throughout the country. According to the Norman Rockwell Museum's website, next year it will be held in Chattanooga, Tennessee and Flint, Michigan. If you're a fan of the fantasy art genre, now is an excellent time to see the museum. Tickets to the Norman Rockwell Museum cost $20 for adults, $18 for seniors and veterans, and are free for active military members and children under 18. The museum is open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and visits are in 60 to 90 minute windows. Masks are required for everyone, regardless of vaccination status. Enchanted, a history of fantasy illustration, will be on display until October 31st. Another art museum opening up that has been talked about previously on WWHEN is Chesterwood, also located in Stockbridge. Chesterwood is the former summer home, studio, and gardens of American sculptor Daniel Chester French. He is best known for creating two of America's most famous symbols, the Old North Bridge in Concord, Massachusetts, and most famously, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. He also built over 100 works of public sculpture in his lifetime. Currently, the museum is displaying another artist as well, John Van Austin's Tipping the Balance. His abstract sculptures, forged out of steel and stone, are a complex synergy between natural forces and man-made materials. These sculptures will all be outdoors. Chesterwood is open for touring from Thursdays through Mondays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Guided tours are available every hour on the hour starting at 11 a.m. and running until 2 p.m. Self-guided tours will only be available at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Ticket prices vary. Visit their website for more information. If you want to bring a small group tour, 
They are limited to 20 people at $18 per person. The Clark Art Museum in Williamstown will be having several new events over the next few months. The first will be a lecture series. In conjunction with the opening of the Durer and After exhibit, curator Ann Leonard, who is also an art professor at the University of Chicago, will be examining the inspiration that artists of fellow painter Albrecht Durer's era found in his work. The methods will be examined as well. This event will be taking place on July 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. It will be held on Clark Arts Facebook page and is free for all who are interested. Visit the Clark Arts website for more information as well as the link. The second new event going on will be a new exhibit titled Nikolai Astrup, Visions of Norway. This retrospective shows the famed Norwegian painter, printmaker, and horticulturalist's work in North America. Astrup began his career following a conventional path, studying painting in Oslo, Norway, and Paris. He then spent most of his adult life in the United States, but kept his Norwegian style of painting. His body of work celebrates Norway's dramatic scenery, challenging climate, and rich local traditions. He was also aware of contemporary developments in European art that nurtured his own artwork. The exhibit is currently on display at the Clark Art Museum from now until September 19th. Tickets for everyone cost $20, but are free for members of the Clark Art Museum, children under 18, and students with a valid ID. It is open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. from Tuesdays through Sundays. Currently, time slots tours are an hour long, but they could be extending soon. Visit clarkart.edu to purchase your tickets. The Clark Art Museum also provides the answer for this week's trivia question. As a reminder, this week's question was, who were the first three writers honored with the Clark Prize for Excellence in Writing? The answer is Kobena Mercer, Linda Notzlin, and Calvin Tompkins. Kobena Mercer is a British art historian known for his work on identity politics in paintings. The late Linda Notzlin was an American art historian best known for her discussions on global work and acclaimed for her essay, Why Have There Been No Great Women Chefs? Calvin Tompkins is an author, art critic, and graduate of the Berkshire School in Sheffield. He wrote for the New Yorker magazine and was praised for his reports on the development of pop art and installation work, among others. They were awarded the prize in 2006. According to its website, the prize, quote, celebrates informed, insightful, and accessible prose that advances the public understanding and appreciation of visual arts, end quote. It has been awarded off and on and off ever since. The Mahewi Theatre in Great Barrington will be offering several new shows and talks over the next few weeks. This comes after a very difficult year for them after most of their in-person shows were canceled due to the pandemic. One of these is the dance performance of Philobus. Fifty years ago, three non-dancers formed this group of athletic, humorous, mind-bending movers that has since become one of the world's most famous dance groups. 
They've been invited to perform everywhere, from the Olympic Games to the Oscar ceremonies. Their latest show, Four at Play, honors their work and is great for all families. If you have a child who is interested in dance, this is a great show for them. Philobus's Four at Play will be taking place on Saturday, July 31st. There will be two showings of this performance, one at 4 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. Ticket prices cost $31 for upper balcony seats, $46 for reserved tickets for the general public, $41 for reserved tickets for members, $56 for preferred tickets for the general public, and $51 for preferred tickets for members. Mahewi's mask policy is that all audience members must wear masks, whether you have had the vaccine or not. Another event going on will be a discussion with Saturday Night Live star Cecily Strong and her memoir, this will all be over soon. In the book, Cecily describes her tumultuous 2020, which included the passing of her cousin Owen from brain cancer, weeks before the COVID-19 pandemic exploded. Don't worry, her book is layered with large bits of her popular comedy to make it an easy read. Weaving together past and present, and told with honesty and heart, Cecily Strong offers us all space to connect and reflect within her story. If you're a fan of Cecily's work on Saturday Night Live, this is a great chance to see her in person. Cecily Strong will be speaking at the Mahewi Theater on Saturday, August 7th. Every ticket includes a signed copy of her memoir. Again, there will be two showings, one at 4 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. At both showings, a fellow SNL star will also be highlighted. Heidi Gardner will be speaking at the 4 o'clock showing, while Bo and Yang will speak at 7's. Tickets cost $33 for Upper Balcony Number 2, $40 for reserved tickets and upper balcony number one, and $50 for preferred seating. Visit Mahewi.org to purchase your tickets. One of the most popular events to do in the summer is visiting Jiminy Peacock in Hancock, Massachusetts. This year, they have many plans for their summer schedule. The first is their Mountain Adventure Park. This area contains many of their most popular rides. The Mountain Adventure Park is popular with kids, teenagers, and adults, and is great for going in small or large groups. Their rides include the Mountain Coaster, the Alpine Superslide, the Soaring Eagle, their Giant Swing, and their Euro Bungee Trampoline. Please note that their bouncy houses will remain closed for 2021 as a precaution, as kids 3 to 11, the restricted age group, still have not been given the clear for vaccinations. Another big attraction is their aerial park. It is a self-guided, elevated outdoor ropes course through the trees. It consists of varying levels from beginner and easy to advanced. There are seven of these rope courses, each of them varying in difficulty. If you're an adrenaline junkie, this is a great event for you. Additionally, Jiminy Peak hosts mountain biking, lodging for overnight trips, an outdoor heated pool, an exercise room, and more. Ticket prices vary depending on length of stay 
and what you plan on doing at Germany Peak. Visit their website for more information on specifics. All non-vaccinated visitors must wear a mask. No exceptions. Mountain Park passes will be sold in four-hour blocks, while all park passes will be sold in six-hour blocks. Attendance is limited, so make sure to purchase your tickets online. That ends this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. If you would like to watch this or any other WWATN episode again, you can visit PCTV, CTSB TV, and NBCTC's websites shown here. Also, if you would like to see the episodes in HD quality, make sure to check out my YouTube page at RT Weary. Thank you.